Let's start with the body. Let's start with the crime scene. I want all the evidence. Written on a dress right in this phrase, well, surprise, found to contain traces of the same neurotoxin that was identified in Dredd's blood. Only Dredd's fingerprints were lifted from the porcelain. Why would only his fingerprints be on it? The red never came off while I was there. He died after he ate me raccoons, didn't he? He never actually took one sip of that tea. The quest fact was sent from inside the studio itself. He found the tea lady's body there. What's this? What's this? Something happened, has it? We're talking about the same tea lady that we're missing. The one who bought the tea. Yes. So we've got two unsolved murders on our hands now then. Actually, no. Eh? According to the officer on the scene, there's evidence that the tea lady was indeed Dredd's killer. What kind of evidence? Come on, Prof, spill the beans! Firstly, they found the song at Quest Fact Sheet. It was sent to Mr. Dredd next to her body. Handwriting analysis has already confirmed it was the tea lady who wrote it. Oh. And on top of that, they found the poison with her, too. The same poison that used to kill Mr. Dredd. So what are you saying then, exactly? As I explained, the tea lady was the one who brought the tea that the victim drank. In other words, the tea lady was Dwight Dredd's killer. But if she were the killer, how come she's wound up dead? Now, you know what this is, don't you? It's a, it was a suicide. At the end of the day, she done herself in, hasn't she? Turns out, T. Lee was a huge fan of DJ DD. Theory is that they must have had some kind of argument this part told us all. What? She killed him because she liked him that much? Yeah, I bet that's it. It's a proper case of hero worship, eh? Aye. No, anyway, case is closed. Oh! So, I can go home now, can I? Terrific! <laughs> yes, you're free to go. Thank you for your cooperation. Alright then. Well, see you, darling. No, there's someone nigging me. What? Can't get enough of me, eh? I do have that effect on people. No, nigging me about the case. Thank you, Miss Holiday. You really can go now. So that's ripped up then. You can go home early if you like, Lucy. Prof, there's definitely someone not right here. I mean, there's a gaping hole in the evidence at the scene and Miss Holiday's statement. Oh, well, nevertheless, the case is now closed. What? Actually, there's something I was hoping to get done. So, uh... We'll pick this up again tomorrow, shall we? Mm, all right then, Prof. No, it's not right. What do you think so far, by the way? Something's definitely not right here. Mm-hmm. Someone's definitely in this. Well, if the prof's off, I suppose I'll have to figure this out on my own. Oh! Prof? 
<sighs> Lucy, did you forget something? No, it's just... I can't get this case out of my head. I thought maybe if I had another look at the scene, I might be able to figure some, some out. You're just not willing to let it go. Anyways, what are you up to, Prof? Just a bit of investigating for fun. For fun? Oh, that's where the tea lady were bumped off, isn't it? Yes, although I can't reproduce the entire scene now, because the case has been closed. I knew it! I knew you wouldn't be able to let it go either, Prof! As it happens, I've uncovered some evidence as a holiday statement. Honest holiday. So what's the evidence you found that backs up Holiday's statement, Prof? Well, Lucy, do you remember what was broadcast? What they were listening to together? I, I think I can remember the gist of it. The evidence is in the transmission itself. I managed to buy a recording of the show. Listen to carefully to this now. We've got a very special guest in the studio today, people. It's the drop dead gorgeous Miss Dolly Holiday. Da, right. It'd be terrific. It's terrific to be on the show. Here, I brought you something. The ever so tasty. Wow, thanks, Dolly. That sounds like a fax coming in already. So, our first request this morning is from, uh, Miss Angel O. Death. I'll be the death of you? Whoa, sounds like someone wants to turn DJ Dwight Dread into DJ Dwight Dead. Don't you go down on me, Dwight. I'd never live it down. Well, if I'm about to sign out for the last time ever, allow me to try one of your mouth-watering offerings first. <laughs> that hit the spot. Uh. Uh. an egg break. Come on, quickly! The Grand Failure Sale is now on. No store has more or less, so get down to Daybridge today! Well? Holiday's laying it on too thick. Sorry. That's Holiday's voice. Holiday's laying it on too thick. Oh, baby. Never mind that. It just struck me, that's all. Okay, but ignoring that. But her voice, her voice was just so thick and sweet. It's way too much. There's a blatant discrepancy between a radio show and the scene of the crime. Can you get it? Oh, I think I know what it is. Do you? Maybe after a look. What's at odds with the recording? I know what it is. The door had to be open. Because it's a soundproof room. No, no. I mean, we can look at that, but I don't think that's what it is. I've... Why would you have the director's mic constantly on? I see. I see. There is a discrepancy between that Let'll be heard on the radio.
Okay, so it's obviously not the door. It doesn't line up with it. Nope. What do you think it is? The broken teacup. There was never the sound of a crash when he fell. If the teacup shattered when he fell, wouldn't there be a crash sound? I guess, but wasn't it listed in the recording as Bang well, Wallop There was no like if you listen to the sound it was just like the sound of someone falling. It was like a thump. There was no sound of glass breaking. That's what got me too. I th I thought maybe they just forgot to put in the sound of things crashing, but This game doesn't do things. This game doesn't just forget. Everything okay. Is intentional. Woo! There were a broken teacup at the scene of the crime, but no sound of a cup breaking on air. Breaking Precise. on air. You can climb out here when Dread collapses from his chair. Yet there's no sound of a cup breaking. The teacup didn't break during the show, you mean? Almost certain. Ba 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 da ba 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 da ba 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 da ba da. Sorry. It's a crazy theory that this holiday statement is true. Dread never drank the tea. If he had, it's highly lucky that he'd have dropped and broken the cup as the poison entered his bloodstream. So Mr. Holiday's statement with the bona fide truth! Well, in that case, when did he drink the poison? And when did the cup break? My hypothesis is correct. Dread was given the poison after the show went off air. The broadcast had finished, you mean? Yes, quite probably. So even though he collapsed during the show when it went on there, he had the poison after that? Uh, now you got me all right flummoxed now, Prof. Dread collapsed on air after eating the macaroon given to him by Howard Day. That's the point. I am sure, and I'm getting further and further from it. <laughs> well, why don't we do some investigating in that area, hmm? Dread's death. There is a clear discrepancy between the scene we executed and the state of the studio just after the show. It poses the question of why Dread become is it distressed after he ate the macaroon? Oi! Why would eating a perfectly normal macaroon do that to him when he hadn't touched the tea? Quite. He hadn't had any poison at all, yet everyone around him mistakenly believed he would die. Almost like he would put just putting it on and pretending to die or something. That's exactly what I'm thinking. There's actually existing evidence at the scene that supports the idea that he was faking his own death. Yes. See if you can find it. Do you know what it is? I feel like it's something to do with the top of the chair, but I'm not too sure. Do you want to look at the evidence? Look at the top of the chair is what you want to look at? Yes. I could be wrong on that area, though. Alright, let's try it. No, oh, this piece of evidence really has nothing to do with dread sudden affliction. I'm eating the macaroon. 
Okay then, I'll try someone else. I don't think it could be good with the macaroon itself. But okay. I'll try the macaroon then. Unless he has some sort of allergy, but that wouldn't... No, this piece... Nope. Okay. So, okay. Here's, here's the idea that everybody's thinking. He didn't actually fake. He didn't actually die when he ate the macaroon. Yes. He faked it. So meaning he didn't actually have an affliction. What proves that he was faking it? The other teacup, right? No. A little something here that happens to say, well, surprise. Hmm. Okay. Hanky, is it? See what it says? Well, surprised? Do you get it? Why? No, I don't get it. He okay. It's in his handwriting saying, well, surprised. But yet! He pretended to die! And he was going to use his hanky to show it all a big joke! That's right. Fred was trying to play a practical joke on Holiday and everyone else in the studio. Okay, does it make sense to you yet or no? It's an awfully dark joke. I mean, yes. I guess so. So he made it look like he was in pain as soon as he took a bite of a macaroon. After he pretended to collapse, however, he dragged the poison teeth and really did die. Once the poison took hold of him, he would have killed over the fair well of eh? That must be when he dropped the cup and broke it, then. And when his wig fell off it. Eh? It's an absurd end to the whole affair. There's a considerable chance that it is what happened. You sound so disappointed. A considerable chance? It's more than dead certain if you ask me. It would greatly narrow down the possible suspects. I agree. Eh, do you know who done it that now, Prof? Do you? Do you? I have someone in mind. Before we pick up the culprit, let's just take some time to investigate the death of the tea lady. I've been itching to look into this. So, let me fill you in on a dead tea lady who was found Yes. On the so. dead tea lady who was found dead. She yes. was very dead. Dead tea lady, dead, 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 dead. So, let me fill you in on the tea lady who was found dead. Name was a nice brewer. Anise. She Anise worked is at the how radio you station it. cafeteria. <laughs> Anise brewer. But the pun is very prominent. Yes. You said the pun. A nice brewer. Anise brewer. Yes. Victim. 18. Female. A tea lady who died in the storeroom. A part time employee at the radio station cafeteria and a huge fan of DJ Didi's captivating voice. She was a huge fan of Dread, and several people say they remember seeing the match having at times. Were they involved then? We have reason to believe that they were, yes, but there's little evidence to actually back that up. I. Well, with both of them dead, there's no one that can tell us for sure, I suppose. Is there no attention where Brewer's body was discovered? There's a storeroom, not a minute's walk from the studio. Right next to it, were it telling. It seems the storeroom is just that. The staff rarely have cause to go inside. It's apparently kept unlocked, though. 
So anyone can get in there should they want to. So Brewer went in there to holler that after she took the drinks to the studio. That seems most probable. What we need to figure out then is what went on in that room. They've managed to attain the distant statements from the suspects about the movements after Jed's death. Have a look over them, Lucy. Will do, Prof. I called the emergency services after Mike told me to. After that, I was with one of the security guards the whole time, waiting for the police. He was just my type. That's all the information we have at this stage. So I can finally have a look at the storeroom then, can I? The question really is whether it's suicide or was murdered. Let's see for ourselves, shall we? Brewer's death. Did Brewer commit suicide? Or was she murdered? We need to figure out which it was. Right. Well, where do we start then? There are two pieces of evidence that led to Dred's murder being pinned on Brewer. Firstly, the sword written in Brewer's head right. Second, the poison used to kill Dredd. I suggest we start by looking at both of them. Aye, that sounds like a plan. Now I've added the story of the reconstruction. Just add the door in the studio to go in. The door in the studio? Okay, sounds simple enough. Yes. Let's get started. Start investigating. Let's check the storeroom. I knew there was something with that spare door. We got a whole new place. A bunch of new evidence. What do you want to start with? Let's start with the cabinet and work our way around. Cabinet. Cabinet stuffed full of old papers, all filed by date. Sweets. A selection of sweets that Brewer brought. Everyone has been unwrapped and nibbled. Speaker. A loudspeaker that continually plays wherever the station is broadcasting at the time. Dread's last show would have been audible on it. That and was found in the recording studio. The fateful song request that Dredd received was sent to this very machine. That's not the one I wanted to click. That's still not the one I wanted to click. <laughs> there you go. Song request. The original whole of the song request sheet faxed to Dredd during the show. A non permanent ink was used, and the handwriting has been identified as Brewers. Pen, a cheap, non-permanent ink pen on which Brewer's fingerprints have been identified. What is a non-permanent ink pen? I don't know. Tiny glass shards. Broken glass with traces of poison identified as the same substance that killed both victims. This was the container for the poison before it was smashed. No, I'm not all done! <laughs> Guess we gotta go with it. Done. There's no question, it's Brewer's handwriting on the song question. And the poison were the same stuff that were used to kill Dread without a shadow of a doubt. I can't deny it seems pretty likely that she did do him in. 
It's too soon to draw any conclusions, Lucy. Personally, I find the broken glass container that can poison. But I'm curious. Oi! That were bothering me too. Looks like it was smashed with some terrible force. Its original shape is beyond recognition. There's no saying what folk will do if there's unrequited love involved, Prof. Dare say there is a good reason for it, yes. Anyway, let's see if there isn't any evidence to suggest foul play. Aye, right, let's have a look. Can I continue to just add more investigation stuff? Okay. The dead bo Brewer's corpse. The dead body of a niece brewer. Cause of death, poisoning. It's the exact same poison found in Dred's blood. There are no signs of external injury. Is this the per- Hold on. It's not the per- It's also cough. Cough! Oh, Coffee. this video. Coffee in the paper cup that was purchased from a drinks machine inside the station. Traces of the poison that killed both Brewer and Dread have been found inside. That's weird. Note, the words ferret, sail, or scrolled into the back of the victim's left hand. It's written in non-permanent ink, so it must be fairly recent. That explains the pet. Or the poison coffee. Do you think this note she wrote on her hand might be a clue about summer? It's obviously something she had just written. I wonder what Parade's saying it means. It's a radio show. It was the um, uh, it was the ad that played after. Hey, Prof. Remember the ad that we played onto the radio after it happened on the show? That's what it was! It was an advert for the big sale at Adam Ferrods! Wow! Where must I heard the ad? And they didn't know they on their hands! That must be it! No. That would tell us something, wouldn't it? Like... didn't see death coming. Yeah, she definitely didn't see death coming, because why would you go to a sale that... Why would you write down about a sale unless you were going to go to it? And why would you do that right before you kill yourself if you're not going to go to the sale? Brewer must have been thinking she was going to go to the fair on sale! And thinking it while she were in that room. So we can't so she can't have had any clue that she were about to die then, can she? No, she can't. Just to be sure, let's find out when else that advertisement was aired. It's just possible she won't be relevant on the location. I'll go and make the necessary inquiries straight away. I'll go and make the necessary inquiries straight away, prop. That was fast. I got the answer, prop. That was unbelievably quick, Lucy. I investigating's all about speed. I'll say. I definitely didn't just go and like turn a page and then decide that I have the answer. Anyways, it turns out that it's the very first time that the ad had ever aired. That is, and it's undeniable. Where was murdered? 